Okay, I'm a Seba from Asa Medical Center. So to welcome you all, uh, our complex PCI 2021 uh, virtual session. So, so we thank you for joining joining us as uh, we have a uh, moderator, Antonio Colombo and Dougu Park. Uh, Antonio so will join soon. And uh, live cases from the Nanjing Foster Hospital of Nanjing Medical University from China. Uh, thank you for sharing chain. Really. So Dr. Buck will introduce the panel and then... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Complex PCI 2021 uh, live case demonstration. Our team and the panel and discussion, we are very uh, thrilled and delighted to see and the uh, DK Kirsch inventor and the master's uh, live case uh, uh, demonstration in real time. Before starting live case demonstration, we invited the worldwide famous interventional cardiologist as, as a key panelist. I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Chu Win Ong, uh, Dr. Do Yun Kang. Uh, Dr. Achunori uh, Okamura from Japan, and uh, Dr. Bill Gogas, and uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, Pravansa, and uh, Dr. Rajin Nang, and uh, Raja Gopal, and uh, Dr. Jung Min Ah. Okay, SJ, uh, could you introduce the live case demonstration? Okay, uh, so Chow uh, Chen will give us the cases DK crochet for complex bifurcation region. So just start that. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, SJ Park. Thank you, DW Park, all my friends. I'm very happy to see all of you on screen. And once again, thanks for your invitation to share our live case as the program defined. So the case will be decayed quite for complex pizza. But possibility to change the standing technique could not be excluded. So let me introduce my team on my right hand side. Uh, Dr. Jin Jie Zhang, uh, I think the he is very familiar with all of you. Next is Dr. Zheng Ge. He is a very famous trial, trialist in China in cardiology. Also, he was trained two years in Monsanto Hospital. So the technician for the inter interpreter of virus is Ms. Topan. So let's start from the introduction of the case, please, Dr. Zheng Ge. Okay. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to here introduce my live case. This patient is 58 years old male because exertional chest pain for uh, 16 years and uh, was in two weeks uh, and admitted to our, our hospital. Uh, the patient uh, was uh, performed uh, PCI for the leg, uh, circumflex because the inferior, inferior was uh, my cardiac infection in, in 2008. The risk factors are uh, hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. The laboratory test showed that uh, cardiac biomarkers is um, negative, and the uh, EGFR is normal, and the uh, ECG shows a uh, two, three, every if the need is T waves inversion. Uh, inject fraction is uh, normal, and the uh, diagnosis is uh, unstable in angina. Next. This is uh, the best angiography we performed the, uh, one month ago. This is uh, a left coronary angiogram. It, we can see the circumflex and uh, the one stand there and some of the lesion in stand segment and the distal circumflex uh, subtotal occlusion. Next. Next slide. Uh, from Cardia, uh, uh, the, the AP and angiogram, we can see the uh, LED and the diagonal first is the um, two bifurcation lesions. Next slide. Yeah, this is the uh, right uh, angiogram. We can see from the proximal RCI to the uh, proximal um, PD is the diffuse region. Okay, next slide. Yeah, we stratified the patient and we calculated the syntax score 27 and the syntax 2 score is PCI is uh, 26 for the yes mortality is uh, 4.2 percent. The cabbage is for the cabbage is mm, uh, syntax score is uh, 21, and the four years mortality is uh, um, so, uh, 3.9 percent. Yeah, we did the, the PCI for the right as, uh, artery. The, uh, performs, uh, we put the three stands from the proximal RCA to the PD uh, proximal. Yeah, next. This, today is the uh, target visual is a uh, bifurcation as uh, the LED and the diagonal first is a uh, bifurcation. And we measure the 
uh, LED and the diagonal one, the KFR and show the LED 0 0.62 and diagonal one is 0 0.4, uh, 0.4. Yeah, next. According to the definition criteria, the di uh, LED and the diagonal one is the uh, um, complex bifurcation regions. According to the definition, two studies showed that for complex bifurcation regions, the uh, decay crash is uh, too, uh, is uh, superior to the provisional standing next to. For this uh, uh, target vi uh, vessel, uh, we, we, we sh maybe we should need to discuss uh, straight the strategy, uh, one stand or two stand, and the imaging uh, guided or angel guided. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. 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 Go, for, your, for your introduction of the case. So passion is uh, pretty young, and the patient has multivessel disease one month ago. So my team has done PCR using 3D years for right coronary artery. So let me show the angiography uh, we, done to, we have done today. Yeah, it's very clear to show the subtotal of the large branch of a single flash. And this is the AP caudal. We use the same French guiding cancer. Looks like a little bit plug burden at the ostium of left main. Next view, next. Yeah, this is the AP cranial to show Medina 111 real complex of African region according to our definition criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause you know, this is the same French guiding. So angiographically, this low LED and uh, diagonal looks like smaller than three millimeters. But mm -hmm. you know, from the angiography, you can see only one diagonal taken from LED. So I do believe diagonal could not be a small vessel, next view. So we used the two wire, one is a BMW, another one is, is Another wire in the diagonal. So this uh, arrow cranial show very tight lesion at the osteo diagonal. Uh, also very long lesion in RAD. Next. Okay, I think this is a fine short to show the distribution of plaque around the bifurcated vessel RAD in diagonal. So before the live transmission, we have a check I was. So next, I'd like to invite Ms. Kopan to introduce the I was fighting starting from RAD. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you see the IVS imaging? Okay, we can see where. Okay, let me show the IVS imaging. The first round, we check IVS from the distal LED to the left main. And here we can see the distal vessel is normal, and the vessel diameter is about 3.0 millimeter. And here we can see the big septal we are joining the LED. With the septal joining the LED, and here we can see the vessel diameter is more than 3.5 millimeter. Then go pull back here, we can see eccentric plaque. Then go back. And here we can see the diagonal two, we are joining the LED. And here we can see the vessel diameter is more than 4.0 millimeter. Then go pull back, we can see calcified plaque in the middle LED. And then go pull back, we can see attenuation, attenuation plaque in the middle LED. And then go pull back. Here we can see the small diagonal. This is diagonal one, we are joining the LED. And here, this is the circumflex. And here the ostium LED, the vessel diameter is more than 4.5 millimeter. We make sure the minimal lumen area is just 2.5 millimeter square and the plaque burden is more than 80%. And the whole lateness from the distal reference to ostium LED is 37 millimeter. And the second one, we check hours from the diagonal two to LED. And the distal diagonal vessel is normal and the vessel diameter is about 2.5 millimeter. Then go pull back. Here we can see eccentric plaque. Go on pull back. And here, this is the ostium diagonal. And here the vessel diameter is just 2.3 millimeter. Let me show the minimal Lumen area is just 1.8 millimeter square, and the plaque burden is more than 70%. And the nettiness from the distal landing zone to ostium diagonal is 16. Okay, this is a baseline I've seen imaging. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Topan. So, we, so far, we have provided angiographic and IOS information. So, SJ Park and the DW Park are my friends. I think we need to open, open discussion. Okay. Great, uh, nice cases in terms of a true uh, bifurcation disease, uh, you know, made in a class 111, exactly. And so 
Uh, what about that? For particular these cases uh, from the panelists, so do agree? Actually, you know, Shaolin Chen is planned as upfront to two sen and mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. <laughs> has to show the TK cross, right? And so, yeah. what do you think? Is it optional, you know, stand mm -hmm. or two stand yeah. from the yeah. beginning? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have a sharing is I have one question. This is a very nice uh, example of the true bifurcation region on the base of the your data is this is a definition criteria to true bifurcation requiring two stand technique. My question is I'm wondering you show the QFR, QFF, uh, QFFR LED and diagonal fence. Is that is a, your routine? A uh, process uh, measuring the QFR also on the basis of QFR result. Uh, do you usually sometimes change your decision making uh, single stand versus the double standing? Oh, thank you. I think this is a very very great question, DW. Uh, you know, QFR now is not popular in mainland of China, but I see for some cases we continue to calculate the QFR. This is also third version of software for measurement of QFR. So we can calculate a QFR from one, from single projection of angiography. Another point is that of course this is Medina 111 true coronary bifurcation region. So I think QFR at the baseline is very, very useful to for RAD but not for diagonal because the presence of plug just beyond the bifurcation. But you know, for any kind of certain technique immediately after the procedure, so repeat the measurement of QFR will be very, very useful to mm -hmm. guide the next step. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Any Thanks. other discussion? Okay, Dr. Wong, please. Yes, uh, hello, I don't change. This is Dr. Wong from Hong Kong. So uh, basically, uh, I think all, we all agree that this is a true one-on-one -on -one, uh, application lesion. And my question is, uh, the side branch, the diagonal tool, um, the maximum size is 2.5. So I think it's still reasonable to accommodate a stand uh, of 2.5 size. But is there any lower limit of the side branch that you would not consider application standing? Say, if this is 2.5 or 2.0, would you still consider application standing? Yeah, actually, you know, I I have had no any experience of using bifurcation dedicated stand. Uh, two reasons. The first is all the similar devices are not approved in China. Secondly, I don't believe the long term efficacy of dedicated bifurcation stand. Uh, second point is about the diameter of diagonal. So because the very severe plug burden, even we we injected nitroglycerin before and geography and I was, so I still believe the visual diameter of diagonal is underestimated. So probably after pre dilation after standing diagonal, the diameter will jump to 2.7. Because, mm -hmm. you know, according to the IOS proximal ID, it looks like 4.5 millimeters. But it is still to the bifurcation ID, it looks like 3.5. So according to the Morris formula, so the diagonal diameter should be around 2.75. Mm -hmm. So this is why I decided to use 2.5 for diagonal. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you. Okay, so from the panels, anyway, you all agree the two stand up front to two stand for particular this bifurcation reasons? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Park. Uh, Dr. Chen, very nice to meet you. Uh, it's a great case. Uh, I think clearly uh, complex bifurcation as defined because there's a long segment of disease in the side branch. And I think provisional stenting would not be a good option here. If you're stenting the diagonal, it has to be a dedicated uh, technique. Uh, uh, but uh, the other option, something we do quite often here, uh, I'm from Brunei, um, is a drug eluting balloon in the side branch and a stent in the uh, main branch in the LAD. Is that something you would consider? Yeah, I think it's another very challenging question. You know, so far, uh, even drug eluting balloon is very hard popular use in, in China. But so far, you know, we don't have very strong data to recommend the routine use of drug uh, coding balloon for bifurcation lesion. Uh, to be honest, you know, another story is that we are organizing another randomized trial to compare a mm -hmm. drug routine balloon uh, for third branch. So far, we only have in, in, include uh, 60 to 70 cases. So probably after two, three years, we will provide the data. So I think. Also, you know, for any any given bifurcation leader, we have many, many, many different uh, options. Okay, it'll be great to have the data. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we, actually, we believe uh, that the, based on the uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Shaolin Chan's data, uh, two stand up front the two stand may be better than the optional mm -hmm. stand in case of a complex, you know, true bifurcation lesion. And mm -hmm. based on our uh, preliminary analysis, our bifurcation data, 
Tuesday, uh, up front Tuesday, in case of a big downward range is more than two five millimeters, is pretty good, you know, mm-hmm. a pretty good outcome so compared to the optional, you know, uh, change stand. So, all right, proceed. Okay, okay. Jun- Junji is a what size of a side branch is tenting? Is sharing yeah. is it two five five? Yeah, two and, five uh, by eighteen. Eighteen. Is it which? Uh, what kind of drug learning stand? Yeah, I think it's local DS. Uh, local, uh, local DS. DS from, uh, yeah, from Microport. Uh, I think it's uh, the best DS, the best local DS uh, in China. Uh, from you know, Microport. Yeah, according to the geography friend I was, so the lesion length in diagonal is around the 16 millimeter. So mm-hmm. I used the 18 millimeter stand. So back to the yeah, previous okay, one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see this uh, geography to show this that mm-hmm. fully called the lesion. Mm-hmm. It's only one millimeter protrusion into the LED. And also, you mm-hmm. know, I use another three balloon to, to in the yeah. LED. Yeah, before mm-hmm. the standing diagonal, I pre dilated the diagonal using two O semi compliant balloon because the lesion in diagonal mm-hmm. is very critical. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just work here. So let me take a video for you to see if there is any digital complication. Mm-hmm. So as I said, yeah. I, yeah, this stand was inflated by nine. I think it's a little bit, little bit unexpanded. Also, you know, according to our DK crash protocol, a uh, okay, inflation by 12. So usually, you know, immediately after the standing side branch, we need to slightly to remove, uh, remove the stand balloon to fully post dilate the side stand. So I think this step is very important for this left man by African leader. You know, for some cases, there will be one more side branch taken from single flash. Because mm-hmm. the side stand is adjusted according to the distance diameter, but it could be very small for the proximal single flash. So in that scenario, probably we need to use another non-compliant balloon to do, to do port technique for, for only for side branch. Mm-hmm. So after, after dilation, Go. Okay, so you can see the proximal diagonal was fully expanded, right? But the middle body of side stem was not expanded very well. But I think it's no problem because next step we will do kissing using non compliant balloon. We can post dilate diagonal stem too. So now let's move to the first balloon crush. So as I said, this is a serial non compliant balloon. It's a, it, I think it's a good size for this LED, but it should be very small for the proximal LED inflation. Mm-hmm. Okay, inflation by nine. 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 So, you know, uh, during the balloon inflation, I did not remove the diagonal wire down. Mm. So, why I did not use a large non compliant balloon to do, post, uh, to do balloon crush? Because we need to avoid the digital section in LED. Mm. So because the three balloon is pretty small for proximal ID, so I have to use another three file non-compliant balloon to do second balloon balloon crush. After that, I will rewire diagonal. Mm. I think this is a very important step. Mm. Is it uh, the showering is it this uh, uh first part? Yeah actually it uh, sounds very similar to first part, mm-hmm. right? First part, second balloon crash, I think are uh, similar steps. Mm-hmm. So once the balloon is in its position, I will take one geography to show you. Okay. No, 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 not too early. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, no, no. It... Okay. Okay. So you okay. can see this mark is very mm-hmm. close to the crina. I think it's a good mm-hmm. position. Okay, inflation nine. This is three, three point five. Three five, three okay. five. Okay, done. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, you you can find that during the inflation of the balloon, so the device slightly move back. So I have to do second time start from six, 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 nine. Okay, I think this is a very good position done. So during the inflation of a balloon, I can feel very strong resistance because. Because so according to the I was from ready, you can see that is not severe, but very diffuse, very extensive classification, classified plug towards mm-hmm. the bottom of a diagonal. Okay, Dr. Chen, is, uh, could you could you we use uh, from the beginning is a three five non-compliant balloon is a kind of a you know 
balloon crochet and pull back as you know small pull back and as you know kind of a you've done it's a part uh, taking a high pressure in the profile yeah. part is yeah, it exactly. yeah exactly you know if they destroy the lesion in not to severe no severe calcif calcification mm -hmm. i personally prefer to use one large non-compliant balloon to do part mm -hmm. to do balloon crush because from mm -hmm. the i would say you can see the protein already looks like very severely calcified mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this already looks good. Uh, also, you know, from the geography, they classify the lesion uh, downstream to the RID. So this is why I need to use two balloons. Okay, give me a mm -hmm. talk. So uh, after balloon crash, also there was no any complication in both the RID diagonals. So I will remove the wire from diagonal. Uh, usually before, you know, for junior junior colleague, so I will recommend mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. the third wire to rewire, to so keep the first wire in the diagonal to serve as a root map. But I think I don't need the root map, small test. Mm -hmm. Okay. All good. Very, yeah, very smoothly, no any resistance. Mm -hmm. Also, I, so want, to show, I mm -hmm. want to show all the audience from mm -hmm. Complex Pizza how to assess the mm -hmm. rewire position. So I will take a photo for you. So can you see that geography? Okay. So it's it's, a, it's a clear to show rewiring from mm. the proxim cell. Charlene, you try to yeah. the re reinsertion of a proximal part, cross right. and proximal part. Right. Uh. Proximal, but not too proximal. You know, uh -huh. if the wire uh, is buried into the two layer of mm -hmm. well, that will be very difficult mm -hmm. to advance the balloon. Okay. Mm. I think the diagonal wire is a same blue, right? Yes. Very, very jumping. Okay, so what's the wire in diagonal give me three three O non compliant balloon. So I think the first rewire is very successful. So SJ Parker, you know, you are the master of the left main bifurcation uh, PCI. So I don't I don't think DK Quash is a very complex standing technique for European guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, in practical point of view, you know, bifurcation Daniel. PCI, uh, main bifurcation PCI, Daniel. I think it's maybe, you know, uh, more easier to do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, LED diagonal branch. The reason why, you know, pencil size wise, even in the circumference is big, LED is big, main is big enough, and so quite, you, you know, comfortable to the, any uh, complex procedure for that. Okay. It's the pre 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 previous three or non compliant mm -hmm. one. 3.0 so, okay. 2.5 okay mm. so, yeah the actually you know for mm. some complex bifurcation lesion provisional mm -hmm. really that does, doesn't work well okay you you try to the first kitchen is a 2.5 NC balloon and the yes. 3.0 the main branch NC balloon yeah exactly mm. you are so smart dw Also, you know, once the balloon in RID and uh, after confirmation of the right rewiring position into RID, so the first balloon in diagonal, the in RID can anchor to facilitate mm -hmm. the pass. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see, the, mm -hmm. the balloon was stuck in the proximal RID because of the calcification. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see. Oh, good. Now good. the balloon very smoothly. So I can take a photo. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no injection, mm -hmm. inflate, inflate mm -hmm. diagonal balloon, mm -hmm. 12. Okay. So usually we will inflate the NC balloon uh, in diagonal uh. by, up to, by up to 16. Mm. 16, okay. So the balloon was fully expanded. Also, you can, you, you can find the middle diagonal stand was not fully expanded. Mm. So I think now it's a ta time mm. to Okay, inflation, 12. Perfect. Okay, to inflate the middle part of diagonal stand. Done. Also, the distal diagonal stand, I think, is okay. Good, Come good. On. Okay, six. six. Go from six. Six ready? Six, eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. Ten. Good. Fully good. expanded. Good. Okay. Done. Done. Great, great. So I will keep the diagonal balloon in the position and uh, Remove the ready balloon to do first kissing. Mm -hmm. For yeah. for the kissing inflation, you know, I always suggest the overlapping lines should be as short as possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for inflation, for kissing inflation, we will simultaneously inflate both balloon to six. Mm -hmm.
because these are two non-compliant balloons. Mm -hmm. So two balloons are very stabilized down. Okay. So I think the balloon in okay, which one is diagonal? This one. This is so before uh, remove of the LED balloon, we always need to check a photo to confirm no complication at diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, take a photo to show. Good, good, good. Excellent. Good, right? So now the next step, I think it's very easy. I will remove LED balloon. And then we use a 3 0 by 38 mm -hmm. DS stand mm -hmm. in LED. Every time you know DW, oh. DW Park, we saw your live cast using Cause you quite for this left man, you are mm -hmm. very, very smart. Mm -hmm. So you you perform the uh, first kissing and then you try to uh, stand LED. Yeah, stand LED. Okay, right. great. So in the you know just the distal part uh, of LED is still is under dilated. <coughs> that the chain, what do you think is? Uh, yeah, actually, as your partner, you can see, even I only use the stereo balloon in already, but you can see a very typical dissection just distal to the bifurcation level. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. this is a, a very strong reason why I did not use the three five balloon. The same thing is that, according to the IWAS, the distal land, landing zone will be in parallel to the ostium of the septal branch. Mm -hmm. So, I will put the stand distally, a little bit distally to the Seventh branch. I also need to multiple projection mm. to perform mm. the full coverage of the proximal ID because the proximal classified lesion. Mm -hmm. So this stand is also very long, 30, 38. So you can say it's not easy to mm. put this stand mm. down. So maybe I will use the NC balloon mm. in diagonal to angle. To angle two point five. I will try my best to make the guiding a little bit deep seating mm. to see. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit concerned about you know after the stand implantation to still you know if uh you want to do a high pressure non compliant balloon to still yeah. you know Standing. on the expansion something yeah. like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think Standing. it's pre dilation so with a little bit big mm -hmm. non compliant balloon would be. You know? yeah, I fully agree. Right. I, will change, I will change it to use the mm -hmm. 3.5 NC balloon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Chen, would you consider using uh, one of the scoring balloons? Because yeah. then you won't have to go so high and uh, the section will be you know, a bit more controlled. This kind of fibro calcification, I always use a uh, uh, score flex or one of those, or even um, uh, the Boston Scientific Wolverine to try to open it up nicely before you put in the stem because there's a lot of work, a lot of stands in that bifurcation area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I fully agree. Because, you mm -hmm. know, according to the I was fighting the proximal classification okay. now looks, looks like a very severely. Mm -hmm. So this is why I only use the NC balloon. So okay. this is a 3-5 NC balloon. Also, you can see because of the angulation, because mm -hmm. of the classified mm -hmm. in, in proximal ID, so it's not easy to go through inflation. So I will inflate the balloon True. here. Down. Oh, you know, the NC balloon is, has a very large profile. Mm -hmm. So according to the pattern of NC balloon, you can Im I imagine how it will be very difficult to mm -hmm. put a stand in. But I think no problem. Give me two five NC balloon. Two, mm -hmm. So I have to use two five balloon in diagonal to mm -hmm. anchor. Okay, great. So I think probably we need some time to mm -hmm. prepare the lesion. So I think you can open your discussion. Okay. So, and the Charlene, and this is a, is a typical example. Sometimes uh, when we uh, treatment uh, doing uh, the bifurcation region, sometimes very severe calcified region is uh, very difficult to uh, the recross the, you know, large, large profile of NC balloon. So, and the Charlene, you use the looks like uh, EBU or XB guide caster. That is your routine? EBU. EBU, EBU. EBU, EBU is a routine use. Okay. Uh, so not not difficult to put balloon into mm -hmm. the diagonal. I think this uh, this is a good. Okay, great. Not, not too much digital to avoid mm -hmm. the dissection. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Professor Chan, can you hear uh, me? I can hear yeah. you very well. Very sure. well. No, no, no. And there are some operators that you know they, they, they use a technique that they, they call it PSO. They dilate the proximal part of the side branch stent. What is your opinion about that before the first kissing? Can you repeat your question again, Bill? I'm sorry. Yeah, there are some operators, they call a, a technique is called PSO. They try to dilate the proximal part of the side branch stent in order to enhance the rewiring. What is your opinion about this? I, th I think it's another kind of technique, but mm -hmm. I, I usually do not use. So do, yeah, you have any, do you have any experience to share with us? Uh, well, yeah, I don't have, but I've seen some small papers de describing it. And my second question, Professor Chen, is um, uh, how about the femoral axis? Um, uh, I remember you using very frequently also the radial. Mm. What, uh, how did you choose to take the femoral axis? Yeah, it's actually you know more than eighty-five percent of procedure are from from radial approach. Mm. For this patient, you know, his radio artery has been used has been used uh, three yeah. more times. So I think the radio artery will be not good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, great. Another question, Professor. Uh, if you see with IVOS that the proximal LAD is calcified, mm -hmm. that gives you a perception that sometimes you will not be able to cross with a stent. Uh, do you do one stent technique and if the diagonal is compromised, then you switch? Or because for some uh, less experienced operators, for example, like me, junior operators, you have very challenging access in this proximal LAD with a calcification. Mm -hmm. And yes, if the diagonal is not compromised, uh, we leave it like this. If it's compromised, we try to switch to two stand techniques. Yeah, I agree. You know, a, if I I was identified with mm -hmm. a calcification, I will recommend to use mm -hmm. rotar or any other kind. But, you know, shock wave or lethal therapy are not available in China. We only have rotar, cutting balloon, or scoring balloon, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, for very severe calcified lesion particularly for complex bifurcan lesion. I don't recommend provisional standing technique as a DW part said, after standing in my way, so it will be very tough to rewire that branch. I think Across it will be very challenged. But you know, uh, by using anchoring balloon, I successfully to put new mm -hmm. DA NCA balloon into the RAD. But great, I don't great. think it's good enough. I have it's to... Real. Yeah, it's, it's real. It's a size it's real, right? Yeah, it's right. real. It's real. Okay. Why don't, you do the, <clears throat> why don't you do a little bit more high pressure in the mm. little bit lower part? Yeah, you still, you know, on the expansion. Um, okay. 14. 14. 16. Okay, done. Because, you know, from previous angiography, after after part, first part using 351C balloon, that was a very, very clear dissection. So I don't want to use the three five mm. to highlight the ID, mm -hmm. but I will keep the balloon in the position just uh, just approximate to the bifurcation at very high pressure, 20. To modify the calcified. Mm -hmm. mm. Good. Down. Down. Okay. So I think I need one more, one more inflate. Now there is no strong resistance from mm. my hand. Okay, one more inflation. 14, Great. 16, 16. Yeah. Down. Mm. Also, from where I was, so the bifurcal angle between RID diagonal it looks like type Y. Mm -hmm. So, because of the presence of calcified lesion in the proximal segment, it will be very easy. You know, calcified lesion localized as a, as a main vessel towards the side branch. So, after standing side branch, it's very commonly to say it's very difficult to put long stand in. Mm -hmm. So once the, yeah. once this long stand, still corner pass through, corner pass down, I will change it to use two short stand in already. Do you mm -hmm. think it's a good idea? Okay, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Yeah, I fully yeah. agree with your opinion. Yeah, sometimes the 38 is the longer stand does not pass. We That's should right. consider shorter two shorter stand. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Exactly. Okay. Great. Oh, no problem. No Wonderful. Problem. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Because of you. Okay. Now I can very safely, very comfortably to remove side of the balloon and also diagonal wire. Okay. I think the remaining steps are very, very easy. For, okay. Test. Test. I need to make sure. 
the digital position. Okay, a little right. bit of, okay, take a photo. Ready? Okay, so I think we still have space to slightly remove them, but let's move to AP Codo to make sure the full coverage of Proximer ID. Mm -hmm. I think the stand a little bit long. Okay, take a photo. Ready. Okay, now stand uh, protruding into the left man. This is not what I want, so I have to put stand. Push in. Yes. Right. Do you think it's a, good. It's a good position? Mm, good. Yeah. Okay, inflation. Okay. Mm, nine. 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 Great. Okay, done. Mm -hmm. So move, move to AP cranial. Okay. Ready. Take a photo to see if there is a digital dissection. I think a no mm. dissection, right? Great, great. great. Mm -hmm. So I will use a three three five three mm -hmm. oh from three oh to four point five three non compound balloon to sequentially post dialect stand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is there is time. True. Uh, Dr. Chen, I noticed you only went up to nine atmospheres when you deployed the stand. I'm just a bit worried because the proximal part is really big. If you were only right. over to nine, then later when you put in your NC balloon, I'm not sure whether it may get stuck. Usually, if the vessel is so big, I like to go to at least 14 or 16, make sure it's yeah. good as much as mm. possible. Mm. Is yeah, that exactly. Problem? Exactly. You know, for my routine case, uh, before post dilating using small NC, I definitely will use a 4.5 to post dilate proximal step mm. <laughs> because I want to save time for your, mm. for your session. Okay, you have enough of time. It's a very, oh, really? you know, interesting to see your, you know, live case. Oh, thank you. To my surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's very easy to uh, to get the balloon down. So, go. Try. This is, is 3.5, right? Yeah, three this oh. is a 3.0. Oh. A 3.0. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because nah, because they stand distal to the septal branch, according mm -hmm. to their eyewalls, the distal already looks like a 3.0. So, if oh, yeah. I use a 3.5, well, I think it will be not safe. No, no, no. Okay, now I can do sequential post dilation. Okay, 14. 14. 18. 18. Done. Still, I think even we inflated the balloon by 20 is still undersized. Okay, 20. 21. From our geography, I can clearly see the approximate age of a right stand. So give me three five. I will very carefully modify the middle LED stand. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Just going back a couple of steps. After the first kissing balloon inflation, we had to go back with an NC balloon across the bifurcation and to dilate the distal LED, the mid-distal LED. And you know, after the first kissing balloon, we realigned the, we aligned the carina. Because we did a LED NC dilatation. Do we need to repeat the kissing balloon to realign the carina? Yeah, I or think is it not necessary? Is, yeah, this is a very good question. You know, <laughs> after kissing, we use the NC balloon to post dial LED, just to go through the bifurcation, will induce the shifting of the carina. This yeah. is a very good question. But you know, uh, during the inflation using NC for LED again, uh, I kept the wire in the diagonal. So during the inflation, for from my personal stand opinion, I will need to very carefully monitor the change of ID, a diagonal wire. If it's uh, moved too much, I will choose the uh, kissing again. But I think your question is very, very constructive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. In fact, 14, this is a 3.5. 3.5, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. 14, Great. 16, done. From the angiography, you can see after post dilation using real NC balloon, there was no, only only slight change of proximal diagonal stand. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. In fact, 16, 18, I think 18 enough. I still remember a few years ago, SJ Park mm -hmm. asked me to, you know, to design a study done to mm -hmm. compare different, uh, different inflation pressure mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. NC balloon, good idea. <laughs> 
Certainly. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, we uh, have a clear understanding about the TK pricing. Yeah, you know? yeah. uh, before the main branch standing, you want to do the kissing balloon inflation, right? Right, right. And so could you tell us, is there any difference in terms of uh, classic mini crossing and crossing? Actually, do we, uh, as I know, so we have a little bit higher frequency of a circumflex ostial part, uh, ISR, something like that, right? So uh, in case of TK crosses, any... You know, advantage for the circumference osteal part, the ISR, the frequency is relatively lower. So, what's different? Total fine. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, our, uh, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, and our 4. very 4. Early, 4. Early, 4. early strategy will compare the, the vessel remodeling of the DK crash, crash, Ban crash provisional is two step technique. Very interesting finding was a very significant. Reduction of the tissue bifurcan angle, particularly for this left main bifurcan linear after the DK crash compared to classic crash mm -hmm. or provisional with two stand tending. But you know, SJ so far no data show the correlation of vessel remodeling, change reduction mm -hmm. of tissue bifurcan angle with clinical outcome. But from the standpoint of the shear stress redistribution, I think a more profound reduction of tissue bifurcan angle will be important for patient. Mm -hmm. That's my preliminary prelim mm. preliminary experience. Okay. So this, I think is, this is a 4.5? 4. 4. 5. Yeah, 4.5. 4.5. 4. 5. 4. 5. Oh, okay, 4. 5. inflation. Okay. Kind of another part here, uh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, this mm -hmm. is the second part. Mm -hmm. So Same. as the SGS suggests, immediately after after side branch is standing, we also can use... Three, three, five balloon mm, mm, mm. to do part to do balloon crash. Mm. Okay, so I think we have finished the post dilation. Mm -hmm. So let's move to epicranial. So next step is simply to rewire diagonal. So we still have time. Okay, okay, you have enough time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Dr. Chen, this is Jung Min Han. I have one Hi. question about hi. Uh, that uh, I have one question about the first kissing, mm -hmm. particularly in this case, uh, very classified LAD disease. Mm -hmm. When you do the first kissing, the is there any risk that the carina may move to the more main branches? So uh, it make it makes uh, the LAD stand delivery more difficult. Is there any risk? Yeah, I think the I agree with your question. You know, according to the IWAS, for for most of the case, I rely on the IWAS fighting to continue my work. From IWAS, if they classify the lesion towards the ostium of the side branch, the risk is that after main vessel standing, there will be high risk of side branch occlusion. If they classify the lesion, localize. At the same side of the side branch, it will be very easy and very comfortable to to standing main vessel to advance the long span. So also, you know why recently we stressed the importance of IWAS to guide mm -hmm. our standing procedure, even for DK crash, if mm -hmm. they classify the lesion as they localize in the main vessel, but uh, towards the ostium or side branch, we have to very carefully modify the classified lesion. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So you're gonna you're gonna rewiring and use the first wire, sure. Yeah, same, same wire. Uh, Fion blue. Fion blue. Fion blue. Fion blue. Okay, good. No, personally, I'm not uh, being familiar with same blue. I, <laughs> <laughs> I Ju, yeah, Junji familiar. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Junji is leading me. Any favorite wires, Dr. Chen, for recrossing into the side branch if the regular wires fail? Yeah, oh. my favorite is the BMW wire. Oh, BMW wire. You know, <laughs> yeah, but you know, recently there is a shortage of supply with uh, BMW uh, wire in China. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Chen, do you have any preference of the proximal or distant portion of wire re rewiring? Yeah, always proximal. Proximal. Always. Okay. You know, the distal wire is a little bit uh, mm. damaged. Damage, yeah, it looks like damage. Right. I think. Mm. 
it will be damaged. Hmm. Yeah. I will change my tag in there. Okay, you can see I put the wire this low to ID hmm. and uh, quickly pull back. So the wire is toward the diagonal. So blue wire is very soft, I feel. Yeah, yeah. So GW Park, what's your feel rate of wire? Yes, so, and, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the uh, Xion Blue is a uh, hydropilic wire, uh, but the problem is the backup support is not good. So, and uh, SJ prefer a choice PT wire. I'm also prefer choice PT wire. Also, backup support is required at the uh, BMW is also good option. Uh, sometimes uh, wiring is very difficult at the time. We sometimes the select uh, CTO wire, Kaya second, and that is a very rare case, but usually uh, Xion Blue and the Choice PT and BMW wire would be most case okay. Yeah. So now I change it to use saying the BMW wire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I trust the BMW wire very much. Mm -hmm. So it sounds we have many things in common. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we could do a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I'm a Tsunori Okamura from Japan. I'm a city operator. So that's why in this kind of situation, I usually like to use the IBUS, uh, using the IBUS uh, guided uh, wiring, uh, using the tip detection method. Uh, the guide wire tip is uh, correctly uh, inserted into the uh, exact point uh, using the Gaia or Conquest. So uh, do you usually sometimes use the IBUS uh, if it is difficult to uh, pass through the guide wire into the jail point? Yeah, or, actually, no. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I exactly, you know, in Trovasco image, I was OCT, I almost used mm -hmm. more than 85% of PCI cast. Mm -hmm. Must be a BMW wire, right? Yeah, this is Good a BMW time. wire, it looks yeah. very... Yeah, it will, it'll take a time. Right? <clears throat> I think it will take time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for this case, once the, the BMW wire cannot negotiate with the dialogue, okay, great. I will change it to use iOS. Whoa. So you see, BMW okay. is much better Excellent. than Excellent. BMW. Excellent. Yes. Mm. That is the merit of BMW. Backup support is much better than Xiong yeah. Blue. Is, even though hydrophilic, the backup is a, uh, relatively weak. But, you know, every time, immediately after rewiring some mm -hmm. branch, I have to take a photo mm -hmm. to confirm the wire. Mm. Great, great. It's from the processing cell. Mm -hmm. So next step, I think, will be very easy. Even the wire is successfully rewiring but you know i still can feel some resistance from the middle part mm. diagonal so i slightly change changes the wire position mm. to Great. pull it as distal as possible so give me three 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 five three five nc balloon so i will put the three five nc balloon in already and to probably and to use a stepwise inflation for diagonal i'm not sure mm. if the two five balloon could not pass down mm. Mm. Into the diagonal. Some sometimes uh, uh, after main branch is tenting, uh, recrossing balloon is difficult. Uh, at the time, you sometimes you frequently use a uh, small list of balloon 1.5, 2.0 like that for side branch reopening. Yeah, actually, you know, you know if the rewiring position is correct, I will directly use the target balloon size. Mm, great, great. So this is the three file and okay. the balloon. Okay. So I will put it in the ID and use two five and see balloon. Only two five. So, so some I some forget. yeah some major difference and the the Asan Asan team usually prefer the balloon crush technique. So after main main branch is tenting, if you're gonna recross the side branch is tenting, we usually should require a small balloon 1.5 1.25 sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, 2.0, and the, so, and the, if the 2.5, you, you want to use the used one, 2.5, uh, the not NC balloon, right? Right. I think that's a major limitation for uh, crossing uh, crush, including uh, balloon crush. Mm. So basically, you know, when we do crossing crush, usually we start from 1.5 balloon. Mm. This All is, right. uh, okay, 3.0 NC main branch. Yeah. And uh, two point five NC balloon. Okay, yeah, right. Both are useful. Use 
Yeah, used one. Yeah. Used yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> All right. I... Share with the money, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if the balloon has difficulty in going in, why don't you just inflate the main LED balloon? Gives you a lot of anchor, then you can push the other balloon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Actually... I yeah, just wanted balloon. to try my best, best to use the older balloon to mm. negotiate the diagonal. Mm. I think mm. that it's not easy. So now I change it to use balloon anchoring technique. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Five, 10. It's a 3.5. Great. Push in. Done. Mm. Yeah. I think now we can inflate the 2.5 balloon. Mm -hmm. The balloon tip is in the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Wow. So you can say balloon. Mm. Was a push it into diagonal down. Okay. So I think that will be not difficult. Wow. Okay. You saved the one. <laughs> yeah, I saved great. one. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Wow, great, great. Eight. Wonderful. 18. Wow. Down. Keep the balloon. Wow, great. Yeah, so no more, no more resistance from the diagonal balloon. Which one is diagonal? This one. We hold it one. Okay. So I think the overlapping is very short, right? Mm, okay. Okay, going up from six, both. Six, eight, ten for diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, done. Yeah. So, yeah, the oxygen diagonal, I think no any sign, no mm -hmm. risk sign. So it means the side balloon was fully expanded. But because it's a three five and the balloon in already I did not use the high pressure to avoid very severe vessel trauma. Okay, take photo. Take photo. Okay. okay. Excellent. Oh wonderful. Oh thank you. You're so what is your next step? You're gonna do final repart for the proximal part of a bifurcation? Yeah, exactly, final part. Final this, part. Yeah, this is a 3.5 balloon, so mm -hmm. I will go directly to use the 4.5 mm -hmm. balloon. Okay. So can you replay the geography? Okay. okay. Actually, it's in a practical point of view, Shaolin, as we're going to use, you know, 2.5, 3.5 balloon, <clears throat> it'll be pulled back to balloon, <clears throat> just, you know, anchoring the diagonal osteum and LED, and we're going to make a, you know, a two five three five adding adding the, you know, big uh, diameter inflations, right? Yeah, so you know, for, yeah, SJ, you know, for some case, without any sign of calcified mm -hmm. in them, I voted, voted BEOs to save the money. But for mm -hmm. this case, I don't think it's a good choice. Otherwise, mm -hmm. your suggestion is very, very meaningful. Good. Great, great. Perfect. Okay, this is a 4.5. 4.5. 4.5. 4.5. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, inflation by 10. I think it is a proximal AG of right this 10, 10 mm -hmm. 12, down. Post dilation using 4.5 and the volume, I think it's a mm -hmm. large enough. Okay, 6. 8. 10, down. So move to AP cranial. So I think the balloon is very close to the bifurcal area. Okay, very close to the crina. Okay, here, start from this. Six. Six, down, down. So, shokan. Okay, so I think I finished the main steps of a DK crotch. Mm. After ni a nitro injection, we will recheck the IWAS. Patient mm. is very happy. Mm. So I see the hemodynamic blood pressure and heart rate are very stable. Okay, IWAS. Okay, great, great, wonderful. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Good job. You know, from our geography, I suspect there is not too severe slight plug prolapse. Mm. Yeah.
antecedent to the Bifurcan area, but not too severe. But mm -hmm. let's check how it was. Okay, great. And geographically, final result is excellent. Looks mm -hmm. like a great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Already, I know I was easily very commonly used in your SAM medical center. Mm -hmm. So, how yeah. many percentage? More than 90? More than nearly, nearly 100 percent in our <laughs> medical center. <laughs> <laughs> might be, might be same in your center. Also, Jun, Junji is also you know expert yeah. in the imaging guided PCI. Uh -huh. Yeah, but small center is not uh, doing the imaging guided PCI, so yeah, most exactly. large center. Yeah. Okay, That's great. It. Okay, open iOS. Okay, can you see iOS image? Okay, we can see where. Okay. It's still, so you say this ID is green. It's green to 3.20. Japan, introduction the iOS assessment. This one? Okay, yeah. Great. Very close to the display. Japan, mm -hmm. see something. Okay. Yeah, here is a muscle bridge. Muscle bridge. Zero lumen diameter is zero. Stain is coming, I think. No, <coughs> yet. This okay. is a stand. Stand is coming. So yeah. it is, yeah, also please spend it. <coughs> the stand yeah. edge is low dissection. Okay, yeah. fully expanded and no dissection. Under the stand extension, it's mm. good. Great. Yeah. So this yeah. segment was just the post dilate using 3.0. Mm. At least the stand diameter is 3.0. Minimal room yeah. stand diameter uh, di <coughs> area is maybe more than 7 millimeters or something, right? Great. Yeah. Here is very close to the bifurcation yeah. area. Mm -hmm. uh, here so is it... diagonal. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, can I have one question good for, for all panelists? So for non left man bifurcan lesion, so far there is no I was a criteria to to define optimal procedure. So SGR DW, do you have any knowledge to share with us? So I think that is a very important question, and uh, on the basis of uh, you know essay in the presented several times, uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight criteria for distal left main it would be guaranteed a very nice long term outcome. Mm -hmm. So any any. Opinion from panel is a non bifurcation region. Yeah, perfect. Exactly the same way, you know, uh, if uh, reference vessel diameter more than 2.5, okay. <clears throat> if you were appropriate stand expansion, the stand area would be almost a 5 millimeter scale, something, right? That mm -hmm. would be related to very low uh, TRL. That is, uh, you know, uh, very low by Ibiscari. <clears throat> and uh, for particular two days cases, I fully agree. In terms of upfront to stand, if the diagonal branch is big enough or more than two five millimeter diameters, two stand would be better. So I believe that data, based on the you know challenge data, that mission, something like that is clear, right? Mm, great. Okay, thank you. I I say the minimal lumen area in RAD is, seven, seven. Uh, is mm. around seven millimeter square. Great. I think it's a big enough, do you agree? Yes. Yeah, okay. so let's, big enough. So let's uh, check I was the diagonal. I think that would be not easy to put I was cast mm, mm. in. Okay, no problem. Great, great, wonderful. Okay. It's on the current data anyways, you know, 5.5 millimeter scale is big enough and more than five is quite, a, you know, enough to maintain the good clinical outcomes. Yeah, another thing I need to tell you is that, you know, our DK Quachi 8 run by small design study is ongoing. Mm -hmm. The study, study goes to compare uh, I was guided and angel guided DK Quachi technique. But, you know, as a study protocol, as a design of study protocol, the problem was a criteria for defining optimal PCI for non left man by African leader. We are we are using for uh, our ticket question is that we using six five five for non -com compliant non left man by African leader, but ten seven six for this left man by African leader. Okay, okay. So, yeah, the Japan 
carefully show us the iOS image for diagonal. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, I think it's not good enough. What's the yeah. stand area is? Uh, 4.71. Yeah, 4.71. Yeah. Okay, so it means we need to do one more piece in balloon inflation. Yeah. Yeah. But the distal... The proximal? The distal stand area is... Mm. Uh, 3.8. Yeah. Okay, so diagonal stand was not fully expanded. So mm. what's I your think opinion? It's good. Right. Pixel size wise is relatively small and mm, right. not too much concern about, you know? Yeah. Yes, right, yeah. Three or nine, four or something like that. Great. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank I you. Think, uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, mm. live case, the uh, final That's result cool. is excellent. So we're going to uh, end it up the live case uh, demonstration. Uh, our team is very happy to see a full scenario of your. Well, it's a worldwide famous DK crush technique uh, by the Shaolin Chen and Junji Zhang. Our team really appreciate the, your live case demonstration. Uh, after hearing your the, uh, featured lecture, we will have a discussion time. So thank you for very much. You're showing the very excellent live case demonstration. We will hope to see you soon in person meeting in the next year's Complex PCI 2022. Thank you. So I'm going to introduce the next uh, lecture and the features, picture, featured lecture and the updated the technique and concept 2021 for complex bifurcation PCI uh, from the uh, lecturer is Xiaoling Chen in Nanjing, first hospital from China. Thank you, Professor S.J. Park and your teammates. So you invite me to present updated techniques and the concepts 2021 for complex bifurcation PCI. I have nothing to disclose. So, in fact, from our previously published serial DK Part 2, DK Part 5, and DK Part 6 series trials, of them, 702 patients with bifurcate lesion were treated using provisional standing technique from intention to treatment. And one year follow up from the table, you can see all the increase of side branch lesion length from 5 mm to 5 mm to 10 mm and to minimal 10 mm. So, increase the prevalence of cardiac death, cardiac death by cardiac infarction, target lesion, revascularization, and target failure, as well as stents of also increase significantly. So it clearly shows the strong correlation of sub-match lesion with the single most event. Again, last year, Dr. Julia performed a meta-analysis to identify the cutoff value of sub-match lesion 10 minutes to predict the one-year clinical outcome. So from our the past studies, which could be summarized as four steps. The first step is to create a definition criteria to differentiate simple from complex bifurcation. From the table, you can see for both nephron and non nephron bifurcation, the general requirements of the major criteria include sub branch lesion length, minimal 10 mm, sub branch diameter stenosis, minimal 70% for this nephron and uh, minimal 90% for non life man bifurcan lesion. On the right hand, you can also say there are six additional minor criteria. So for any uh, bifurcan lesion, that may you plus any two minor criteria are the general requirement for the, the diagnosis of complex bifurcan lesion. Since the birth of this definition criteria, we designed and published our definition two trial, which only include a complex bifurcan lesion according to the definition criteria. Uh, we compare the two stand technique and the provisional stand technique for such a particular complex bifurcan lesion. Of the two stand group, more than 80% are DK quasi technique, and one year follow up, you can see very high rate of child lesion revascularization, tidal resonance, cardiac infarction after provisional standing technique, with subsequent significant high rate of TLF, which was 11.4% compared to only 6.1% of the two stand technique. After the publication of DK watch the definition two trial, we tried to find out the mechanism correlating with the high rate of procedural myocardial infarction after provisional standing technique. This is a summary of our another OCT bifurcan study from the figure. You can see for any complex bifurcan lesion. So in the presence of the non side branch lesion length, which was defined as a minimal length 10 mm plus vulnerable plug in the inner vessel could significantly predict the occurrence of procedural myocardial infarction. Also from the table, you can see a between long side branch edition based on the result of vulnerable plug in the inner vessel, there was no significant difference in terms of the cardiac death and the TLR, but very high rate of time vessel myocardial infarction 
leading to the final hybrid of TF in connection with the long sun branch emission lens and the vulnerable plug inlay mechanism. Finally, we need to identify the correlation of perioperative myocardial infarction PMR with mortality. So this is called a PMI study from the field. You can see according to the current five the different definitions including force UDM, ischemia criteria, scar syntax, and XL trial. There was a significant different rate of PMI after standing for the complex, for the, the general overall overall of bifurcan lesion. Finally, at the bottom, you can see the, the percentage of the helicopter, the mortality and the cardiac deaths are also different among different uh, criteria for the, the diagnosis of perioperative myocardial infarction. This type of shows that we relied on synthesis, the first UDMI, and also its clear definition, sky and Excel definition for the, the for defining perioperative myocardial infarction issue of the adjusted masses. There was significant correlation between PMI and uh, cardiac deaths uh, between the among patients treated by Stanley attending for or by for lesion. Uh, another very striking, striking finding was a non significant correlation between syntax definition defined PMI and cardiac deaths. So it just is simply UDMI criteria, SCI criteria, and SL definition are very, very useful and important to. Identify PMI and to identify the correlation between PMI and the cardiac deaths. I think this is very important finding to guide our next clinical trial because PMI is very, very meaningful, it's very, very predictive for the cardiac deaths. The next slides I will briefly summarize the comparison of different randomized trials for wife cardiac. So far, there are two kinds of randomized clinical trial DKH3 EBC9 and DKH5 trial. To compare our different standing techniques for this left main bifurcan lesion. On the right box, you can see definition 2 and DK part 2. Two trials include all kinds of bifurcan lesions defined by the Gina Ronaldo and the Zero Ronaldo. All these uh, five trials compare the provincial standing techniques with the two standing techniques for different types of bifurcan lesions. Table briefly summarizes the comparison of UBC man, which was published recently in European Continuum. And this is our DK part 5 study. Published in JAP. So, in general, more simple lesion included in the EBC lane compared to very complex lesion in DK5. For example, according to the study protocol, so the requirement of a sunburn to lesion lens was longer than 8 minutes in EBC lane compared to 60 minutes in our DK5 study. Also, patients with lower syntax score, older than 70 hours of MI, low CTO. Are included in the EBC man compared to no limit of syntax score for DK5, which also enrolled patients with a particular myocardial infarction older than 24 hours for any CTO lesion in the right corner of the RAD or surface after successfully re uh, recanalized the other patient for being included in our DK5 study. Finally, cool off stamp technique was used in 53% of the patients in the two stamp group in the EBC man trial. But in our DK5, only DK5 standing technique was allowed to be used for into step group. The primary endpoint in the EBC then was a combo of the deaths, any cost deaths by having a function of the TL, slightly different to cardiac deaths, cardiac deaths by having a function TL in our DK5 study. Also, the EBC then study was designed as a super reality study. So, there's an assumption of 25% of NAS in the two step group compared to only 14%. Of the perimeter standing technique. Interestingly, you know, from our Tikai Five study, the combo with the base rate uh, was 10% in the Tikai Pachi group compared to 14% in the provincial group. Another two very important things from EBC9 are only 85% of the patient had appropriate cardiac enzyme measurements, and uh, also most of the patients from EBC9 had very low experience of uh, PCI for complex left femoral malformation. So again, let's back to procedure and outcome comparison between EBC9 and DK5 and DK3. The left DK3 published a few years ago compared to DK5 and the prolonged stand technique. Even there are slight different in primary endpoint between these three studies. So the unit the consistent finding was the high rate of maze after cool standing technique as shown. It was 16.3% in DK3 at uh, 
very similar to 17.7% in the EBC man study. So uh, simply from this two EBC man and DK Apache 3 study, we have two proposals there. Coulomb stand tending should be removed from the TOs uh, for this left man by the region. Again, uh, from EBC man and DK Apache 5 study, we have achieved a very similar miss rate at one year follow up of the prominent stand tending. It was 14. 0.7% in EBC9 and 10.7% uh, from our DK Apache 5 study. It will help to address cardiac deaths and target target loss of muscle by having infection produced in our DK Apache 5 for primary and pump. So finally, you know, except for DK Apache 5, EBC9 and DK Apache 3 also showed very similar prevalence of stress and losses and the one year follow up after the loss and panic. Another very important thing. Of the high rate of stencil doses from a DK Apache 5 study of the pre stand technique, it was 2.3%. The reason that it correlated with the high rate of standing failure for some branch of standing vessel in the provisional group. So finally, uh, we have some criticism on EBC main chart. It was a superiority study with a final neutral results. So in general, it's a field study. For any kind of field study, you cannot see we could not say A is non inferior or super regular or equal to B treatment. Secondly, because according to the assumption for EBC9, very high rate of mass at one year for two stand technique, it was 25%. And finally, there was 17.7% with 8% reduction. So this wrong assumption will induce high rate of bias at the type 2 errors. So I think these are very important findings for. The compression of the current BC man, DK Apache 5 and DK Apache 3 3 trials. So, in the last slide, I have to say EBC man trial and the comments risk the risk in the paper could be very risky because, based on the, the introduction and the discussion, EBC man paper will stimulate intervention cardiology, cardiologists to pursue this stabilized approach in a single stand strategy in the majority of patients presenting this complex condition. Affecting, affecting the distal left man. Here is an example of a prominent standing technique for this left man by African region. After standing man vessel, there was a diminished blood flow in the synthesis, so we treated synthesis using TAP technique followed by teasing and part technique. Same as that, synthesis totally cool. So patient experienced standing and uh, patient died at the balance after the standing position. So in general, for the Future of standing technical trial for this left man by region. We are trying to design the most study to compare DK Quash and the provision of four simple this left man by region stratified by definition criteria. So the primary endpoint could be also one year TLF. Thanks for your attention. So, and uh, uh, we see the live case demonstration for DK Crush technique. We will have a discussion time 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, with uh, a participating panelists and discussant and the uh, open discussion would be okay for 10 minutes. So any comment from the panel or discussant for after singing the, you know, the TK Chris technique? First, I want to ask the panelists about the selection of the choice of the upfront tooth stand technique in this kind of case. Because the patient has a large one diagonal branch with a significant disease at the proximal uh, part of the diagonal or branch. Uh, in definition two trial, in those cases, a front tooth ten one, but in EBC main, the provisional stenting one. So there is some conflicting result of the how to treat this kind of di large diagonal branch. So do you have any opinion or your routine practice during treating this uh, kind of large diagonal branch? I want to ask two panelists. Okay, any, any opinion from Bill and uh, Dr. Saar? Okay. So okay. Uh, I think with this, with this case, we saw three big trials hmm. published by Professor Chen, the definition two trial, uh, the ultimate trial about IVO's guidance, and also the DK Class A trial, which is uh, we, we anticipate. Uh, well, this is a very skillful operator. And as you saw, uh, for junior operators, in order to grow this calcified proximal LAD would be a very big challenge. So uh, recently, we saw the EBC, 
the European uh, bifurcation club. I think the Europeans, I mean, would uh, would prefer one stand technique, a long stand there, and in case of side branch compromise, switch to two stand techniques. But of course, when there is a lot of skill and a lot of experience in double kissing cross. This is also, uh, based on the data, this is the most relevant technique to have the least TLF rates and also the best clinical outcomes. Now, of course, I'm not sure, uh, depending on the geography, the DK crash or the mini crash uh, would be the best technique to save time and equipment and uh, US dollars. But uh, I think we can discuss it later after the lecture of Professor Chen. Mm, great. So it's uh, my question to Dr. Oka, uh, Okamura and the, in Japan and the, in Korea, in Japan, I know is a balloon crush or classic crush or mini crush is widely used. Uh, DK crush is not frequently used. Uh, how do you do usually the crush technique in Japan in contemporary uh, practice? Yeah, so uh, I'm not familiar with the bifurcation uh, intervention, uh, but uh, my area, uh, for me, I usually use the cure stenting, cure uh, because uh, I'm still uh, wondering about the three layers of the proximal part and also the recourse point. So maybe the DK crash or crash standing, the, maybe the decrease, decrease point is very important. Uh, distal part, maybe no good. Maybe the proximal part. But I think that's a little bit difficult to control it. Uh, so that's why, uh, that reason, uh, mainly I uh, usually use the accurate standing. So I want to know, uh, yeah, procedure. Procedure simplement, uh, uh, sim uh, simply, uh, simplifies the procedure a DK crash or the crash is better. Uh, but the, uh, maybe the uh, advantage of the long-term outcome of the uh, DK crash is better than uh, maybe the cross standing, maybe from some uh, publishment. So I don't know the uh, clear reason or the mechanism of the uh, long-term uh, advantage uh, of the DK crash or the crash standing compared to the uh, uh, cross standing. Uh, so please, please uh, yeah, teach me or inform me uh, the mechanism. So, and the final final discussion time is Dr. Xiaoling Chen joined. And any question to the Dr. Xiaoling Chen would be okay from panelists. Any comment or any question? Uh, so, maybe I have a question regarding the rewiring uh, before the kissing. So, we always emphasize we would like to rewire the side branch uh, for the proximal uh, strut. So, um, I think most of the time we may be able to see. Uh, the, 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 the wiring, like uh, Professor Chen's case, very nicely from the fluoroscopy. But uh, I know that uh, in some places, like maybe in Japan, I, I'm not sure, but uh, they are using quite a lot of OCT or OFDI, that sort of thing, to meticulously select uh, the, the cell that they would like to cross. So, so what's the opinion from the panelists or from Professor Chen that uh, using imaging to guide the wiring uh, of the side branch through the proximal cell? Okay, Shaoling, any, any comment for that? Yeah, I, I think intravascular image guided rewiring is excellent. But you know, for routine case, we can we could not use intravascular image for every case. Particularly, particularly, you know, if one day you have twenty case to do, so it's impossible. But you know, for some case, for education, for the training, for junior junior fellow, mm -hmm. so I will show them how to use OCT. As well, I was mm -hmm. to guide the rewiring. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. How about just using a double lumen uh, microcatheter? Because uh, with that, you get really good support, and uh, the wire tends to go in quite easily. Use a Sasuke, and you put it there, and the wire a bit, it tends to go in quite easily, in my opinion. You mean the double double lumen caster for side branch yeah, wiring? Yeah, like Sasuke. So if you mm, not calcium, just put the microcatheter in, put it exactly where you want it. Wiggle, wiggle, yeah, wiggle. I agree, but I could not hear you very well. So sometimes we use Sasuke or the you know double lumen caster for side branch passes. Yeah, that sometimes work well. Yes, I agree. Your opinion. So in the final, any any comment or question? To I was just thinking about the earlier discussion, uh, Dr. Uh, Gogas as well about you know the comparison with provisional uh, stenting in a patient in a patient like this. I think we should be very careful interpreting the EBC main study. I don't think. Uh, provisional stenting can be considered in complex bifurcation lesions such as this one. Because what we're doing is, although we are talking about you know, single stenting, if this case was done in the provisional method, we would actually be balloon dilating the side branch at least on two occasions, even in a provisional stent. 
So at the beginning, you know, the EPC main protocol recommends aggressive pre-dilatation of the side branch. Mm -hmm. And after we scan the LAD, we go back and do another kissing balloon dilatation where we again uh, balloon dilate the uh, side branch. So what we're doing really is POBA in a vessel uh, in, that is significantly diseased. We're talking about the vessel getting compromised. The fact that the QFR is 0 0.74 in the beginning means the diagonal is already compromised and anything more can only do it, you know, make it worse. Uh, and if you just do a POBA without a scant, the long-term results are going to be poor in the side branch. So I think, uh, you know, uh, we should be very, you know, in a situation like this where there is complex bifurcation disease in only more than five to 10 millimeters in the side branch, we should go for an upfront two, uh, two skin strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we should, you know, you know, with practice and experience, you know, everybody, people can learn DK crash and other complex uh, two skin techniques. So, and it's a great case, it's a great, great demonstration. And I think philosophically, we should be careful in choosing the appropriate technique, even though it's a bit difficult sometimes. That's the comment, thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, so I, I just like a final the question to the Dr. Sharing Chen, you know, uh, the, the recently and the EBC main result is for looking at the, uh, the distal left main bifurcation region, two large random trials is available. It's a TK crush fiber trial and the EBC main trial. Two trial is indication, inclusion indication nearly same, but the final result is somewhat different, conflicting result. One is uh, uh, insist uh, uh, two stand would be okay, better than provisional. Is the EBC main is a provisional would be also okay. Uh, compared to the, the, the double standing. So how, how can you interpret in the real world contemporary clinical practice? Uh, how do you think about that? Yes. Yeah, I think this, <laughs> I think this is a very challenging question. Mm -hmm. uh, will you play my, my pre-recorded uh, presentation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, you know, I have pre pre provided some, some points in my presentation. So for your question, I want to go briefly uh, actually, you know, EBC main was designed as a super rarity trial, mm -hmm. but finally it's, it got very neutral results. So I think uh, for any uh, field study, we could not say, oh, provisional is not inferior to two sedan, or even much better, something like that, because it's a field study. Secondly, you know, uh, so far for this left man by Fugandina, except for EBC man and our DK Quash 5, we also published our DK Quash 3. I think it's very important. From our DK Quash 3, so the one year mass rate of the cool loss standing technique is very similar to EBC man. So it means cool loss standing technique does not work well for this left man by Fugandina. I think this is a true finding. Also, you know, from Nordic series study after five years of follow up, after a, a very high rate of stents on both A's and TR after uh, cool loss stent tanning. But in EBC main, cool loss stent tanning was used in more than 53% in two stent group. So I think this is the only reason why two stent tanning uh, group did not get lower rates of maize. Thank you. Thank okay, you. great. So I think time is over and the Professor S.J. Park, could you uh, summarize this session and, uh, and end it up uh, this session? Okay, uh, really uh, thank you. Thank you all for the, joining us this fantastic you know, lecture session. And we uh, really can realize what uh, you know, TK Chris should be. So maybe we're gonna have a more you know, interesting session in the next time and hopefully to see you to face to face in the next years of a complex species I'm meeting. Right. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.